Hey everyone, welcome back to my Maverick channel and validators, you know, running validator nodes. Just like in Bitcoin, they're miners, in proof of, which is proof of work, in proof of stake, they're validators. Obviously, most of you know that, most of my listeners know that. But this, I've been reluctant on doing this particular topic because I didn't know exactly what angle to approach it because there's a lot involved. There's the software side, of which there's a lot of material online, and there's the hardware side. Now, personally, as I was doing research in this, I figured that it's there's a lot of platforms that already have step-by-step -step guides on how to run a validator node, but there's not too much information about the hardware part of it, and it's hard to find it out there. I found one Reddit post where the user actually went into detail. They took their time to explain what to expect, the different tiers using a Raspberry Pi 4, uh, choosing to use cloud computing, and other things as, as we shall look at. So this has been a very touchy topic for me and very sensitive topic for me and scary topic for me because I can't claim to have any particular experience in running a validator node. The only thing I've done is to delegate my tokens. And you know, there, there are quite a few advantages that come with running a validator. And if you ask me, I would say that learning how to run validator nodes is extremely important. And a lot of people in the future will be scrambling to understand this space. It shows how much enthusiasm you have towards learning new things and how much you're willing to put yourself out there to learn these new concepts that everyone starts out a novice at. Now, the advantages obviously are that you learn a lot of things to do with distributed computing, you learn cloud computing, you learn cryptography, you learn security, and you build your resume around this very important aspect of the blockchain and distributed ledger ecosystem. Now, in this video, I'm just going to briefly show everyone a few links of, in case you're starting out in this process, you know, where can I go in the beginning to read up? So you save yourself a couple of hours and by the time you're done, you'll have taught yourself enough knowledge to look into this field because personally, I think it's very, very important to have a grasp on these technical details when it comes to blockchain because, you know, ultimately developing a business around this is going to be the most important thing. So the first link is this, you know, there's Polkadot. You've all heard of Polkadot. Polkadot has a documents page. You can come here and go through this documents page. It has preliminaries. It has, you know, the basic information you need, a secure validator, reference implementation. Um, it has Polkadot validator lounge, you know, how many dots do I need? It has all information that you need, including the hardware requirements. Now, here it shows that you need a CPU, which in this case, they're recommending Intel, Intel R Core TM i7, uh, 7, 700K CPU, 4.2 gigahertz. And then storage, you need you know, non-volatile memory, NVMe solid state drive, uh, which should be reasonably sized. So hopefully 80 to 160 gigs. And then the memory is 64 gigs. So you look at this information and you're like, hmm, this is like what I normally need with a computer. But obviously the things you have to consider if you're looking into full on enterprise validator node running, you need more sophisticated infrastructure, which obviously normally comes at a price. Like you need servers, you need CPUs, but CPUs that are specifically meant for that purpose. You need storage type. I think NVMe storage should be fine. And then basically it's like setting up a computer or your own PC or a dedicated server or a dedicated computer, but it has a few features, extra features that are really purposefully built for a computer that's going to stay on 24 seven, 365 days a year. But you can get a lot of information, copy paste different codes. If you've set up whatever you're setting up, either if you're deciding to do cloud computing or if you're deciding to run your own hardware, because those are two options. If you look at Cosmos, of which the Fetch AI network runs on Cosmos, they also have their own documents, which, you know, shows you prerequisites, um, explains that, you know, running a cloud, running your validator node on cloud is similar to running your, your validator on hardware. The only difference is, is that you obviously have more control of your hardware. So this is another link you can look at to educate yourself a little bit more 
the information is right there. And for things like Ethereum, there's a lot of information out there. But there was this website which is called allnodes.com. So essentially here, you don't even need to have any sort of infrastructure. You don't need to know about cloud computing. You don't need to have hardware. All you have to do is to come here as long as you meet their prerequisites. For example, Ethereum, you have the 32 Ethereum. Avalanche, you have 2000 Avalanche tokens. Dash, you have 1000 Dash. As long as you meet those prerequisites, you come here, you pay their monthly, you know, revenue or whatever they're asking for and they take care of all the hardware and technical requirements and shenanigans in the background these websites like this one which is blog.back which essentially recommends some of the best cloud computing you know platforms out there so this saves you a lot of time and i can see ovh cloud ovh cloud is you know talked about a lot so i imagine it's one of the best cloud you know computing services that you can go to so this is one good website that you can come to and compare prices compare infrastructure compare reputation of different platforms and make a decision this amazon web service so you can see the top three are quite known there's another link here which is cloud booklet cloud booklet basically these people are showing you a step-by-step -step guide of how to set up ubuntu 20.04 on the google cloud compute engine it's a very short step and it's all about just clicking and selecting your prerequisites which you can obtain from reading these and usually on the first page of these you know write-ups from these different companies or blockchain documents and you set up you set that up and you know you've taken care of most of the work then there's things like red hat ansible you know drive automation across open hybrid cloud computing so this is a way of organizing your work on cloud computing infrastructure so this is something you can also go ahead and learn just to add onto your, you know, resume. So Fetcher itself made it a write-up of its own. So you can just come here and read through to get a better understanding of the prerequisites, especially the technical requirements because they're actually published here. Like Fetcher is built on the Cosmos SDK, the secure source code ledger can be found on GitHub. And, you know, this involves installing Golang, C++ compiler, and several other C++ cryptographic libraries. But normally, these, this is code that's already available. You can just copy paste it. So you just invest a little bit of time to understand these things. Then they have the documentation page, which has an introduction that then shows you, in case you want to run your own hardware, it shows you that you need at least two CPUs. And we're going to shortly look into what that means. You need at least four gigabytes of RAM, 500 gigabytes of the SSD drive, you know, for storage, 100 megabits of internet speed. And they're recommending Linux operating system, or Ubuntu 18 or 20.04. And you can just follow up on the setup. This guide assumes that you've successfully installed, configured and connected your validator. And you can just click here and find out more information about this and use these guides to guide you. So this post here on Reddit was, you know, the most the most useful guide towards the hardware path of validation that I've found online. And it was posted by a user called Lambo Shinakagini one year ago, which is a comprehensive look at hardware staking. So if you go through this, he talks about how Linux could be the best route to go because they could be constant upgrades of Linux in the future. And given that it's an open source type of thing, it's accessible to everyone. You need to have a backup, you know, that's a prerequisite. You know, you need to have backup because you need to run your validator 100% almost because in, because you're penalted for downtime. And then it goes through, in case you decide to use a Raspberry Pi, what are the disadvantages? Obviously, you all know, if you've used the Raspberry Pi for any intensive work, it sometimes just shuts off because it's overloaded and it can get certain errors. So you either have to get the highest grade Raspberry Pi, which, you know, may not really serve the purpose that you need, but it's something that you might look into if you're experimenting, especially if a network is just starting out. He talks about if you decide to use an old laptop, what are the prerequisites? What are the expectations? your SSD storage, the more you have, the better in terms of storage, because as networks grow, everything grows. And it talks about the caveats to this. So stability and time, obviously, then talks about a new laptop, a new rebuilt desktop, custom built computer. So as you know, most of our desktop computers aren't built to stay on 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days. So in, those are things you need to put into consideration, depending on how serious you want to be about this. Then there's this option, which is NUC, which is next unit of computing. 
or a mini PC or a decentralized application node. Then he talks about the performance. For example, there's an example here, which is Avando. When you go to Avando, you can see that there's custom built plug and play units, which you can use to run and stake validator nodes. So you can see here this Avando with the most expensive one, $1,600. So it's going to cost you a bit. Stake on several networks, for example, Ethereum 2.0, Polkadot, Avalanche, you know, and I think you can also customize it to do other things because they say others. And then you can find out details about it. And obviously the lower the price, the less, the less it can do. But the interesting thing obviously was, okay, then at the end, it talks about virtual private servers, like what we looked at, cloud computing, Google Cloud, um, Amazon Web Service, Azure. But then he gives his final take, which is my opinion, which is his opinion. This is my favorite option, which is the server. So here you, you're going to the serious stuff. Enterprise servers are jam packed with features and are specifically designed to do exactly what we're trying to do. They run 24 seven, 365 days. They have redundant power supplies in case one breaks. They often have two CPUs. Remember those were the prerequisites for fetch.ai. So in the unlikely event of one going bad, you can pop it out and restart with just one. They have built in raid cards. So you have redundant storage. They have hot swappable drive trays. So if one of your drives goes bad, you don't even need to shut down. All the components are high quality and built to last. You also get monitoring and maintenance tools that are not included in consumer gear like iDRAC and ILO. And then it goes on to say, you really need to look around for deals when it comes to this. Usedservers.com charges a premium for the convenience and customization they offer. If you search through eBay or even better, your local classifieds, you can often find some gear that someone paid a large pile of money to get for a few hundred bucks. So it depends on how much you're willing to look out there. But if you come to such a website like useservers.com, you can actually buy good servers that are on sale, or you can still choose to use the same website and choose your own custom requirements, like what kind of process are you looking for? What kind of memory are you are looking for? Depending on what they're offering. But if you chose to build your own, your own custom build computer, or you have your own small infrastructure like the NUC or a mini PC, you can choose to use Dapnode, which is a custom built open graphical user interface that essentially you just download onto the system and you don't have to know any prior knowledge in programming. And you can just straight up, you know, start running nodes on Ethereum and other networks because most of the details are taken care of. So I really hope this video helped someone out there. And I hope at least it helped you know where to start from in case you want to get into the validator node game, because I think it's something that would be extremely valuable for anyone who learns about today for the tomorrow to come. Guys, thank you for watching. Have a nice weekend.